Hello. In this lecture, we're going to learn about how modern web, web applications work. It will be pretty difficult to write complex application in a way how I showed you in the previous lecture. So there are hundreds of different frameworks out there in every possible languages which try to solve this problem. Even if you decide which language you want to use, there are still lots of frameworks to choose from. Most of them, however, have something in common, and that's their architecture. They follow a software development pattern called the Model View Controller, or MVC. This concept splits the responsibilities of the application to three different components. Let's see. So first, we have the model. The model basically manages the data. It is independent from any kind of user interface, and usually it uh, interacts with some kind of database. And then the second is the view. It's kind of obvious what the view is. That's what the user sees. The view is responsible to represent data to the user. So if we have our user here, the view sends data to him. In a web application, this is basically what you see in the browser. Then we have the third part, which is the controller. The controller which receives the data from the user and based on that, that data decides what should happen. And the controller will interact with the view and the model uh, to instruct them to, to do that what the user requested. And when everything is ready, then the view will uh, send the data back to the user. Now, this is really a basic definition and all frameworks have different understanding what are the responsibilities of each component. As I said, there are lots of MVC framework, frameworks out there, like ASP.NET or Ruby on Rails or Django or whatever else. But that's also the reason why it doesn't make sense to learn all of them. Uh, because it's not possible. There are so many of them that it's not possible that you will exactly know how each framework works. So basically, what I try to show you here is to understand the, the workings of the framework in the background, but not really uh, the exact coding of each framework. In this lecture, we are, work with, we are gonna work with Django, um, only because I like Python and I know Django, but uh, the important thing is that you, do, you understand the concept so that if you are gonna do penetration testing for a living, when you see any of these frameworks, you have a, a general understanding what happens in the background. I think understanding a concept is gonna be enough to start working with any of these frameworks. Of course, you have to go, you have to do a lot of Googling when you're doing an assessment. So as I said, we are gonna work with Django. So let's first install Django. I will do pip install. Pip is the package manager of Python. So you can install uh, lots of Python packages through pip. And the application we are going to write is going to be a, a town town dispatch. You know, town towns are the lovely animals what Luke uses to survive in the uh, snow desert on Hoth. So we're going to write an application uh, which will help the nice guys at the rebellion to efficiently reserve town towns for their travelings. So first go to the exercises folder and we're going to start a Django project here with Django admin start project and we will call the project town town dispatch you can see directory was created and there's the manage.py that's a, a Django file what we can use to manage this project and then there is our project called town town dispatch and it has four files in its settings URL and WSGI. I'm not going to explain everything about Django. I will just tell you all, all those things which are necessary for this for this simple application.
First, let's go into the settings. And then I go to the installed apps and add our project. Town, town, dispatch. With that, we are hacking a little bit the Django structure, but uh, I want to keep it as simple as it possible. I will make this window a little bit bigger. And um, now Django takes over all the database management for us. For that, first we have to create the database. We can do that if we go back a folder and then say Python manage.py migrate. As you can see, based on the necessary components, it created all the all the necessary databases and um, and tables. All right, let's go back to the downtown dispatch folder, and first we are going to create the view. So it's called view.py, and we are using the Django. Dutch dot HTTP and importing the HTTP response class. And then we say def index. This is going to be the function which is called when the index page is loaded. So it gets a, it gets a request as a parameter. And first, only for testing, we return an HTTP response using the string index. So it's going to be a simple HTTP uh, HTML file with the string index. And then we are going to have another view which is the town town request. This is going to be called when we are requesting a town town reservation. And say return. Again, we are yet only going to test whether it works. So we just return again a simple string. So basically here we define that we have two views. One is called index, the other, in the other is the town term request. And so far it's gonna only return the string index or the string town town request. All right. Although we have the views now, but the application doesn't know what to do with them. So the MVC, change, uh, the MVC frameworks are really different from, from the traditional websites because now we are not really requesting files which are going to be either executed or delivered, but there is, we are talking with a framework. So basically when we are loading a URL, it's not, it's not pointing to a file anymore, but the framework will have to we have to know what to do when this URL is called. So somehow we have to tell this to our application that we that we want to execute these views when a specific URLs are called. We can do that in the URLs.py. You see there is already the, a URL for the admin page, but that we are not going to use that, so we are going to override this right now. All the URLs which are relevant to the application should be listed under this under this URL patterns array. So I will need two URLs. This is a regular expression here. And the first is the request. And then here in the second parameter, I tell 
that whenever the URL request is called, then the town town request function should be executed. I also have to import it so that we can execute. So from town town dispatch dot view import index and town town uh, town requests so from the views we are importing these two functions the town town request function is called when the request your path is requested and then when the page is simply loaded without a specific path, then the index should be called index. All right, that should be it for the URLs. So we have two URLs which are calling the two views. Let's test this first. So we go back one folder and then call Python manage.py and run server. This is the test server of Django. And it runs, it tells you that it runs on localhost port 8000. So let's go to a browser. So let's call localhost. and port 8000 let's see yeah so we first called the root then we received the test text index because the index function was executed and now if i called the request as we defined in our urls file then we get the string town town request because from the views the town town request function was called this is basically what what's called routing in MVC applications, that you have some kind of URL list and the routing knows what part of the code should be called when that URL is loaded. This is basically the controller of the application. So we have now a, comp a controller and a view, but we don't have the model. Let's change that. Let's create a models dot pi and in the models dot pi I will first load the models from the Django DB and then I create a new class called reservation which is a, which inherits from the models dot model so as i said in jungle you don't interact with the database directly you create a model for your database that's basically uh, you create classes a class is a table and then you the class have attributes and those are the columns in the table in our model we need to attribute one called name and that's going to be a character field it's called car field and we can set the max max length to 30 Hopefully don't, nobody has longer names than 30. And then we have a date. That's a date field. This table will, will have a third attribute that's an automatically created ID field. We were gonna use the ID field as a reservation number later. So we have a reservation table with three columns, uh, name, date, and ID 
And with that, our model is more or less ready. So let's close this. And now we have to tell Django to actually create these, this table in the database. So we say Python manage.py make migrations and then our app name. So you can see that the reservations model was created. We do migrate as well. And that's it. Our database is ready to run. At this point, we have the model, the view, and the controller. But we have to improve the controller and the view so that the application actually do something. First, we are going to update the, our views. We will add the form so that you can submit a downtown request. So first I will create a folder called temp dates. This is where our templates for our views will be stored. And there I create an index.html. So this, this index.html is going to be a simple HTML file. which will contain a form, which will send the request to the URL request, because that's what we defined in our URL spy. The method will be post, and it will have two input fields. The first is name. It's an input type uh, text, we call it again creatively name, that's it, and we add a line break after that. And I will just uh, copy paste this line and change it to be date, type text, but it's called date. And then again, we need a third input field, but that's the submit button. So it's type submit and um, value, the text of the button should be submit. Or, uh, actually, let's reserve. And with that, our form is ready. All right, so we created a simple form so that the user can submit a name and a date to the server. Let's close this. We still have to change our views.py so that the application knows that it should return this index.html when the index is loaded. So we say tell down dispatch view and here instead of returning an HTTP response object, I will import the render function from Django dot shortcuts render. And then I can remove this and say render request and index dot HTML. It will search automatically in the templates folder for the index dot HTML file and return that. And of course, if you would load now the index, you would get the index HTML, but if you submit, nothing would happen. So we need to update the downtown requests function as well, so that it does something. 
I will just uh, import our model from models import reservation. This way your views have access to the database. And here, let's check whether the request have a name and a date uh, parameter in post. With this, we check that the, the post request which was sent has a name parameter and then that it also has a post parameter. Or date, that it has a date parameter, sorry. And if both parameters exist, then we create a new reservation object. So basically a new line in our table. If you do that with the reservation class, and the name should be the name from the request and the date should be the date from the request. All right, so we have a reservation object. The object is created, but it's not yet saved in the database. For that, we have to say reservation dot save. And with that, we write the database. And if that's all done, we can return. But in the response, we say that uh, your reservation ID is, and it's a string, and the string is reservation dot id so we return this text with the newly created reservation id we don't do too much error handling we just say if there is no name or date supplied then we return with another http response saying that something went wrong no town town for you today sorry steady. Hey, steady girl hey what's the matter okay so just to recap what we did we said that if the index is called then the index html should be sent back to the browser and if the town turn request is, is uh, called, so a, a new town town reservation request is sent, then we check whether it has a name parameter and a date parameter. If both exist, then we create a new reservation with these two parameters, and then we save that in the database. And at the end, we return the reservation ID to the user. If these parameters were not supplied, then we just give an error message back. So let's try this. I quit. Before we start the application, there's one more thing to do, uh, which I forgot. Django is a pretty cool framework because it has lots of security in place by default, which of course we have to turn now off, or at least some of them, because we are not implementing them in the, in the application itself. Uh, so we go to the town town dispatch folder and open the settings pie. And then we go to the middleware section. Basically the middlewares are our code, which is executed in the background uh, automatically. For us, what's problematic is the cross-site request forgery protection because we didn't build it in the form what we created. So we will turn it off now. By the way, we will, we will learn about cross-site request forgery shortly. It's a pretty interesting topic. So what I just do, I will just comment out this line, the CSRF line, and then that should do it. And then let's start the application. So Python 
manage.py run server. It's running. And then let's load the index. So localhost 8000. We got the form. So I tried to reserve a town town for myself for 2017 5th of May and click on reserve and we got that our reservation was successful and the reservation ID is 1 because basically that was the first element in our database now let's go back a little bit to to the project close the server and what I want to show you is that Django by default uses a SQLite database that's basically a database written into one file and uh, you can see it here, the db.sqlite3 and we can open that with the, with the command sqlite3 we can open this file we get the SQLite prompt and then we can execute more or less normal SQL queries First, but uh, in SQLite, you can ask for the tables by dot table. So these are all the tables which our current application has at the moment. Most of them were created automatically by one of the middlewares or or whatever, because all the uh, session management is turned on and user authentication and all that thing. What's interesting for us is that you can see this table here. It consists of the project name and then the name of the model class, which was the reservation. Let's look into that table now. So select everything from town, town, dispatch, reservation. And with that, we are basically listing all elements in the table, but there is nothing else right now there except the one reservation we made. I will open a new tab to start the application and do another reservation. And then we can go back here and then reserve one for Luke uh, for the day after. And he got the reservation ID too. And if we go back to the database and then we check the town town dispatch reservation table, then you see that there is now another entry, a reservation for Luke. At this point, we are finished. Now, the Rebellion has a convenient way to manage its town town resources. Yes. Of course, I admit the application needs a little bit of visual tuning, but it's up to you. So uh, I suggest you to play a little bit with Django, experiment, see how it works. It's uh, not a super easy framework, but, uh, but it's pretty cool. And as you could see, there is a lot happening in the background, uh, even in a small application. But I hope it, it kind of showed you the concept of MVC applications. Other frameworks use the same concept. So there is uh, the controller with the routing URLs. There is some kind of model uh, for the, talking to the database. And then you use the views and templates uh, to uh, create the pages for the user. This is pretty complex, but uh, don't be afraid. Um, to be a good penetration tester, is, it doesn't mean that you have to be a good programmer. I'm not a good programmer myself, but I consider myself a good penetration tester. So um, the important thing is that if you don't understand something, then Google it and try to understand it. Okay, I, ho I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>